Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. I want to get as far as possible as I can on this this week. I need to first cut this bottom portion out that I just finished and I'm gonna start on this wing and come around. If I can finish that, I might start on this side. And I have this mosaic that I would like to finish by grouting and then putting it in this frame and getting it shipped off to the client. And that's it. I'm gonna start by cutting this bottom portion off. So this has already been cut apart here. So let me move that one out of the way. And it does take several passes with the blade to get through this mesh, especially if there's a little bit of thin set that you're having to cut through to begin with. So I'm gonna speed this up and I'll show you when I've got it good to go. It's separated, but I'm not going to cut it out completely because I want it to stay in position over the design and uh, not get knocked out of place from where it needs to be in relation to the other pieces. So I'm gonna put this back and get started on this part. Now I've got some plastic wrap and I am going to put it along the edge here so that when I lay thin set down, the two pieces don't accidentally get connected. And where there's a change in the angle of it. I have to be real careful that there's not a bunch of plastic wrap bunched up there. And when I get to the end, it's the same thing since I didn't cut it all the way through. But I'm actually gonna tape it down. I found that the tape helps to keep it taut and prevent it from getting bunched up. This might be hard to see since it's all clear plastic. Because I'm going to be grouting this in two different colors, I can tape this off uh, so that it, the two grouts don't mix, or I can be super careful and use my no tape method. So today I'm feeling like I don't think I need to tape that off. I feel like I can do my no tape method, so that's what I'm gonna go for. And I'm gonna start with the dark and then get that all cleaned up, and then I will move to the lighter background color. Now, just a reminder, because I started this project many videos ago, uh, it is stained glass on a piece of birch plywood that I prepped by priming it with Kills Primer Sealer. So when I'm finished, I will be putting it in a floater frame. That's it. like a hot mess. I'm gonna wipe it up just a little bit with some shop towels and then I'm gonna let it haze over. Pretty much done with the black grout. It hasn't set up 100%, but I'm gonna hold on to this until the very end in case I need, in case white gets on uh, this accidentally, since I'm doing with this with no tape, I can uh, cover it with black. So here I go with the, when I say white, I mean linen. Here I go with the linen grout. grouting is done. I've got the dark in, I've got the linen in, 
But now, if you look closer at some areas, there is nothing in there. So some of the worst uh, places are between the light and the dark. So for instance, around this thorn, there's a gap. Around some of these flames needs to be touched up. Around this leaf, there's no grout. I need to fill that in. There's a gap right here. And so I need to decide, do I want those areas to be the light grout or do I want them to be the dark grout? And then I need to fill it in. For instance, this space I believe needs to be light. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go with light around this bottom part of the leaf. And then up here, I think even though most of the outlining around the heart is black, I don't want a big piece of black to kind of come up and go down in that little uneven spot. So if I make it light, it's gonna blend in with the background a little bit more. So I'm gonna make that one light. So I'm just gonna go around and touch up any of those itty bitty gaps that need to be filled and, uh, and then get that all cleaned up and I should be done. I also wanted to point out this drop, which I left a bigger gap between the drop and the heart so that I could outline it with black grout and you would be able to see it. So I went ahead and went all the way around the drop with the block, even though these down here do not have black around them, they have the linen color. That's it. and it's all cleaned up but the edges are still the primed white color and I want to make them closer to this top color or the color of the ground. I have some Liquitex Professional Heavy Body Acrylic in unbleached titanium which is basically a linen color. I have diluted a little bit on this plate and I'm just going to coat the edges. frame in black and antique gold that I purchased for this mosaic because the client asked for it to be framed. The corners protect it during shipping so I'm saving them because I'm going to go ahead and ship it in this box. That box will be in a box and this frame comes with some hanging hardware here. We're going to get it all set up. We put this in the front. That is what it's going to look like when it's hanging on their wall. I like the gold accent on there. To attach it to the frame itself, we I actually have to flip it over and go this route. So I'm going to grab a towel because I don't want this to get scratched. Before I screw those in place, I'm just going to use this little drill bit to drill some pilot holes. That'll make drilling the screws in a little bit easier. And before I screw anything in, I'm gonna take this off for just a second because I wanna make sure that these screws are not too long. What we don't want to happen is I don't want them to uh, be so long that they pop through and knock off the glass that's on the front and they are just long enough. Any longer and they would pop that glass off. There's gonna be a little bit of metal between the top of the screw and the wood, so that's gonna push it back just a bit, so it's fine. It's just enough. I always check that because I don't wanna destroy my mosaic while I'm putting it in the frame. hitch knot. So to do the lanyard hitch knot, uh, watch carefully. I pull the wire through and then I take the end of it, which is down below, and put it behind. Then I bring it over and put it through. And then 
I bring it under and put it through that side. And then I tighten the whole thing carefully. You don't want to crimp it accidentally. And I need to have enough room on the other side. just like a lanyard. Then I wrap around six to eight times as tightly as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I take wire cutters and snip. And then I take, usually I use needle nose pliers, but I found these other pliers, so I'm just gonna use these to crimp that end in so that it doesn't poke anyone. And I do the same thing on the other side. Go down below, bring it up through this, and then through this. Pulling it taut and then wrapping it. And I flip it over and make sure it's good to go. Looking good. Now I have this all beautifully ready and it's in the frame and I have the box that's going to go in a box to ship it, but I'm not going to ship it yet. I'm actually going to give this grout a chance to really uh, set up over the course of at least 36 hours. So it'll be three days or so before I ship it. But now I can look at it in the frame and sort of enjoy it for three days before I send it out. That's it. I'm going to tackle this left wing. Working on the St. Luke mosaic and I've been using thin set as my adhesive. I keep the thin set in a baggie and often at the end of the day I have a little bit of thin set left and I felt like it was going to waste and it was sort of bothering me so I thought I've got to use it some way. What could I do? One thing you can do is you can make substrates and I kind of came up with something I've never seen before so here it is. It is a piece of uh, AR mesh uh, stuck in an embroidery hoop and I put two layers of thin set one on it and then I let that cure and then I put another on the back just to kind of stiffen it up and it's it's pretty stiff here so I think what I'm going to do is use little tiny pieces I used to do cross stitch and I'm kind of just doing a very simple design similar to a cross stitch sampler so 
it's kind of neat because I can see the grid on here and you can see a grid on a cross stitch project. And so I'm using grid paper to map out how the design will go. And I'm gonna get after it and see if I can do it. That's I'm actually it. gonna start by marking off the design. So you can see it comes up three squares. So I'm going to count up three squares. One, two, three. This is the center one. I kind of have two centers, but I'm just gonna pick this one. So I just have a stem in the middle and it goes up one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I have a triangle. I'm afraid it's gonna show. Well, I'm gonna use thin set, so it's gonna be covered, I guess. Demonstrate how to make a French knot out of mosaic. Start with a piece of filati. Cut it down. Stick it on. That's my demo. <laughs> well, I had a lot more space here. Maybe I didn't measure correctly, so I'm gonna have to come up with something else to fill up this space. Not sure. But. once in a while this happens and that is I'm about to start for the day and I realized that I forgot to clean up the thin set that's right here a little bit on the corner and a bit on the edge there all of that needs to go so how I do it is I start with this mini crowbar tool and I use it like a chisel I just chip away at it which is one reason why, if there are any changes, I wanna make them before this thin set sets up because it's really hard to get pieces out. There we go.
72 degrees and sunny, winter's over, and I have not cleaned out my fountain yet and gotten it started. So I'm gonna do that today, right now. Well, it wouldn't be so gross if I didn't put bird food in here, but I put bird food in there in the winter and birds come and eat it. But birds are messy, so I need to clean that out. I've got a bucket of hot soapy water and a scrub daddy. I'm gonna get after it here. much better all right now I've got the bin this was in my shed all winter so I'm gonna place it in there and fill her up and I haven't tried that pump the pumps don't last forever but maybe it'll work it worked at the end of summer so we'll right. see I ended up cleaning that out the inside of that bin was nasty just from being in the shed all winter I'll give that a rinse And now we'll put the pump in. It's got these little suction cups on the bottom. So let me stick that right in the middle. And I guess I need to thread the cord right through there. Let me do that. So to get this hooked up, we just move the cover. This is um, attached to my railing. Put the connector through the hole. This is year three with this bin. I did get a new pump and I had to get a new uh, tubing last summer. It got kind of clogged and gross. Let me fill her up. All right, I got the plug over here. I'm gonna plug it in and we'll see what happens. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no, looks like something might be clogged. Shoot, I'll have to fiddle with it. Here's my fountain. Pretty sad. I think I need to take a toothbrush to this and get some more of that grime off from the birds. Uh, I think my line might be plugged. I don't know. I'll have to mess with it. I almost can't believe it, but I went in my garage and I found some tubing. So I'm going to replace the tubing right now. It gets, tends to get um, mildew in there and then it gets clogged. So I'm going to take care of that right now. Okay, got it all hooked. It's not connected to the deck, but I'm gonna test it. Yay! All it needed was a new tube. Great. So I'll adjust it and get it hooked out to the deck, and then it'll be good to go for summer. fountain at night. That light is the light that's in the bottom of the bin. So it's kind of magical. That's it. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.